<sighs> boys, 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 boys. We are finally here. Say hello to Summer Kiaru. Hi. Welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace, and today we are going to be talking about probably the most anticipated banner of them all, as well as some of the other patch notes for the upcoming month. However, there are some like really interesting things that Crunchyroll has actually done, and I would like to talk through them. And so I'm not going to actually have a chance to go through Summer Kiaru in this video. And to be honest, I think that Summer Kiaru deserves to have her own video since she has a utility in both like CB and Arena. Okay, and so with that being said, let's jump into the video and let's have a look at our wet cat over here. Look at her, she's so cute. And so here we have it, we've got Summer Kiaru. She will be coming on July 9th from 11 p.m. UTC time. And so this banner is actually going to run until August 1st. And what I want to say is that this is probably the most interesting thing in today's announcement. However, let's get to that at the end and let's just go through the rest of the content in this. And so guys, we have like 28 friggin days to actually get her. I believe her original banners on JP or like CN or whatever were like 18 days, I think. And so that kind of like puts us a little bit behind on the banner schedule. It's up to you as to how you want to interpret that. But like, to be honest, it's like, okay. It's going to make a few things really, really interesting to say the least. So you guys already know it. She's going to be right up and she is just going to leave after this banner ends. For anyone out there that's kind of new to the channel or like new to the game, if you are like considering starting the game, I definitely would consider like a Summer Kiaru and Makoto reroll. Especially because Jun is about to get her event and not only that, get like her farmable shards. I think the era of rerolling for Jun, especially like now, is kind of over. You should definitely be looking at Summer Kiaru and a Makoto combo. Alright, with that being said, let's come back to Summer Kiaru another day, but like... That's awesome. We are finally here, guys. We are finally here. All right, let's move on. And next, we have the Summer Story Event Part 2. So if you guys remember, starting from the last event, there was actually a VH boss. And what I am not pleased to announce is that we are going to be getting VH bosses from here on out. Honestly, guys, eventually, it's going to get easier and easier. However, like we will have to find our way around them for now. There are definitely some guides out there, and I know it's going to be like a hell of a pain. But when it comes out, I will have the team comps, I will have the guides, and I will be suffering for you guys. Guys. But yeah, essentially it is the same stuff. I do not have to go through this. 1 to 15 normal stage, 1 to 5 in hard stages, in which the hard stages you can actually farm. It should be Akino. Yeah, it's Akino over here. So we've got Akino and Mifuyu nodes. And so the three nodes is going to be the Akino nodes and the two nodes is going to be the summer Mifuyu. And so this is going to be an awesome addition to our stash for when we finally use Akino in about two years time. Otherwise, to be honest, guys, you guys already know what it is. It's the same, same. I don't want to spend too much time on this. So if you guys are new, again, like go check out my previous event video. And so you guys can can have a sneak peek as to what to expect for an event. All right, moving on, we have Summer Mifuyu next, and this is quite, uh, I don't want to say exciting. It's not really lackluster either, but it's like, it's okay. It's cool. We get another waifu. Similar to how Summer Kokoro was free in the last event, we are getting Summer Mifuyu in this one. And so she is going to be our welfare unit. And as you guys already experienced in the last event, we should be able to get her up to three stars. And so honestly, that's pretty nice because she's pretty cool. So today at the end of this video, I'm going to do an evaluation on Summer Mifuyu. They definitely are some utilities, but it's best that you actually know what she does first. And to earn some of them for you, it's going to be exactly the same. You just need to defeat the boss five times at any difficulty level. And again, you should be able to get her at three stars. But with that being said, let's move on. The last thing I want to talk about here, which is equally as important as like the summer Kiaru dates, is this one over here. You can see that this event is going to last until the 28th of July. And so you see here, 28th of July, and up here we've got the 1st of August. It's all going to make sense, guys. And I think a lot of you already know what's about to happen, but like we'll talk about it very very soon all right moving on we have the game update so we have area 14 chapter 7 and episodes 9 to interlude and honestly that's really exciting this means that a we're going from rank 10 3 up to rank 10 5 we're going to be getting our level cap increase from 102 up to 105 which is really nice and funnily enough this tip from crunchyroll is actually pretty legit i don't know about you guys but i've actually had to buy out the exp pots from the store so yeah just make sure that you guys have them because like the requirements for the experience pots like it's getting really really curvy like we we need a lot. On top of that, Area 14 unlocks something really, really awesome, which is the Jun Shard, as I did mention before. Again, especially right now, I do think that the era of like re-rolling for Jun and Makoto is kind of dead. Obviously, after this patch or after this banner, like you definitely could go back to the Jun and Makoto. But to be honest,
this, we are going to be, honestly, we already are drowning in limited banners. And so what actually makes sense is probably going for Makoto and that limited character at that time. We're going to have like Halloween Shinobu. We're going to have like Christina. We're going to have like Sama Tamaki. It's better to have the option to be able to farm Jun from these stages as well as get her from the upcoming event. Because for these summer units or for these Halloween units or for Christina or whoever, you're going to have to wait like a year. Actually, not Christina because Christina comes back at every like two months. All right. On top of that, we've got the Kurumi node, which is actually really good because we are inching, we're inching ever so close to getting the unique equipment. And if you guys didn't know, Kurumi is actually part of the first batch, I believe, of the, the units that get the unique equipment. And so when she does, she is going to become a powerhouse in Arena. All right, moving on from that, the next thing is that we have a battle shop update where we're getting Ayane memory shards. Honestly, this is pretty freaking cool because you guys already know Ayane does the bonk. She helps you like kind of skip some boss mechanics in CB. And so if you're able to actually get her shards from this, it means that you can farm her up to like five stars and it'll probably give you like a significant amount of damage. It's not going to like really blow your mind, but it's going to be pretty noticeable. So honestly, this is a great change. I think it's right on time because the Rin one for the dungeon update, it was kind of late. But yeah, this is a great addition. Like her bonk is like pretty freaking sick. And so all of these updates, it looks like it's coming out on the 9th of July. And so that's all. Uh, that's very soon. <laughs> Actually, I think everything is kind of coming out on 9th of July, right? So we've got the Summer Kiaru banner. We've got this event, though I do think the event is going to be coming out like 12 hours after, which is admittedly a little bit weird, but just like keep that in mind. All right, so I think we've actually reached the end of this entire post and let's have a look at if we missed anything. In summary, we've got the Summer Kiaru coming up and you guys already know if you don't get her now, you're going to have to wait a year to get her. We've then got a story event part two to Summer. We've got Tamaki and Mifuyu going to have fun on a zero rupee. Wait, that kind of sounds like they're being poor. I mean, I guess that's like super relatable, but <laughs> I'm excited to see what this is going to be like. We are going to be getting some of Mifuyu for free and hopefully you should be able to farm her up to three stars. And we are going to have the July content update drop where we are going to get Jun farmable shards as well as Kurumi and Shinobu. Level cap increase 102 to 105. That's pretty standard. And honestly, that's pretty big considering we're going to have to fight that freaking VH boss again. We're going from character equipment cap of, wait, 10.3 to 10.4. You know what? I am just gonna trust Crunchyroll with this. But what this does mean is that I'm actually just gonna run off and do some like furious like research and theory crafting. So yeah, let's see if it's gonna be 10-4 or 10-5. That's pretty interesting. Other than that, we've got chapter 7 of the main story unlocked. That's gonna be pretty interesting. Like I'm, pretty, I don't know, I don't know about you guys, but like I'm pretty invested in this story. And lastly, we have the INM memory shards added to the battle arena shop. Okay, so let's not wrap up this video and move on to Summer Mifuyu. Let's do a quick character evaluation. Honestly, I like Summer Mifuyu. I like Mifuyu, but like it's pretty meme -y. So in a nutshell, Summer Mifuyu is a midline unit. So you can see here, physical attacker, which is the same as like her original variant. And to be honest, when I hop over to her skills, like honestly, it's very, very reminiscent. In a nutshell, it's a lot of single target damage, which would make you actually think that like she is pretty good for CB. However, if I jump over to like this CN timeline thing, you're actually going to see that she is not really featured anywhere. I guess, unfortunately, she just does not have the DPS to keep up with some of the other units. And so I guess with that in mind, let's just go back and talk about her a bit more. Her Yubi is Leviathan Lance, where she does large physical damage to one enemy in the front. She also gives physical attack buff to all allies. Essentially, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's probably one of the most straightforward skills, right? A giant physical damage nuke to the frontliner and a physical attack buff to all allies. So let's move on to skill one, which is going to be inflicting medium physical damage to one enemy in the front. And then on top of that, she actually does a little bit of like splash physical damage to enemies around the first target. And so you guys can see that it is centered around 300 range from like the nearest enemy position. It's okay. However, the ratios are like not that great. As you can imagine, it's an AOE attack, but I don't think it's going to be like crazy. If you really wanted to play around with this, it's probably going to be something like Mitsuki. However, because it's on the skill one, you can't really use Saren on it. Saren will only juice up the Union Burst. And so I guess the next best thing would be like a Monica or a Kokoro to really juice her up. Moving on, when she actually gets her UE, it gets a little bit nutty. And as you can see, the ratios actually drastically change. It's 26 times up from 3.4 times. And so that actually makes the splash damage like significantly stronger than the base like single target damage. On top of that, the physical attack multiplier goes up to 2.1 from 0.27. That's like 10 times more damage. Maybe not 10 times, maybe like 7 times, but like that is still way more than it was before. And as you can see guys, all it takes is like a UE that does this crazy stuff to make a unit viable in CB or in arena. Okay, moving on, we have a skill 2 which is a physical attack and physical crit rate buff to self. Honestly, this is quite nice, but to be honest, like crit rate in this game, seriously, it's still really not that great. I don't know if you guys know, but like 
at this stage of the game, like critting is kind of between like five to 10%. There's not really many characters that can exceed that. And so that's kind of why Suzuna is like so freaking good. Having guaranteed crit, having a guaranteed two times damage is just so massive. And one of the next characters that are gonna have that is gonna be someone like Christina. And so again, that same logic can be applied to her as well. That's what makes her so freaking good too. As well as a whole bunch of other stuff, such as like being completely overloaded with a whole bunch of other cool skills. However, moving on, let's have a look at her EX skill. Essentially, she just gets a whole bunch of physical damage. And you guys already know, bond level bonus, it is shared between the different Mifuyus. I think there are only like two. And eventually we're probably gonna get the third, but like, let's not count on that one. Coming down to the attack pattern, two, one, and then two auto attacks. So that's okay, except like, why would you load up the initial pattern with auto attack? I guess it makes it a little bit harder to get into this nice loop over here because it actually ramps up quite well. However, when I compare this to the other welfare unit, like Summer Cockro, it's a little bit lackluster, but I digress, it's okay. So I guess now let's kind of talk about like the applicability or like the practical application of Summer Mifuyu. As I was going through those skills, hopefully a couple of things should be like ticking in your head. For example, large physical damage and then you got physical attack buff. And then over here, you got physical attack buff and crit rate buff to self. And then for the skill one, you've also got a medium physical damage to the one enemy in front. If nothing else, this should scream CB to you. But like I already showed you guys, she doesn't actually feature in any of those comps. And to that, I say, don't be discouraged from using Summer Mifuyu in like CB. The only reason probably that she's not in here is because like when we get to like 11, they start having Kana. And for you guys who don't know, Kana is a CN exclusive unit and she is like so busted that she features in pretty much like every single comp. I guess the bottom line is that there is just not enough space for all of these physical damage units. And so whilst on paper, Summer Mifuyu like seems pretty dece, in summary, she is just another physical DPS. She's another Hiori, she's another Suzuna, she's another Shiori. And it seems that she's just not able to outperform them to actually take their spot. However, again, especially if you're in like the mid game or like the more early game, you're probably not gonna have the Shiori or the Suzuna or the Hiori at five stars. However, from this event, you're probably gonna get Summer Mifuyu to three stars at least. And so I will definitely try her out again for replacing DPS. Do not replace defense down with her. She has no defense down. All right, with that being said, then let's talk a little bit more, I guess, about her like arena utility. And as you guys can see, there is not really a, like any utility here. She is pretty much full damage. And as you guys can see, as I scroll through these skills, there's not too much utility if like anything at all. And I've told you guys time and time again, like utility is king in arena. Unless you guys have like predefined team comps or like team comps that have synergies with each other. For example, Ninon and Mitsuki or like Lima and other AOE characters. I don't think Summer Mifuyu is like bringing enough to the table for her to actually like, you know, be really relevant to the meta. I do believe that there are some niche cases if I look on PCRD fans, but like for the most part, she will be largely irrelevant. Again, however, I am talking probably like from the highest level of play. And so if you are again in the mid game and you are like lacking physical damage, like she is definitely one of the people that you can put in. I guess for her, it's quite nice because she's kind of like Mimi where she stands in the mid line. And so it kind of makes her safe. However, obviously this is not ideal, especially in this meta where we have like a whole bunch of Lima and Ilya or like Lima and Ninon or Lima, Summer Pekarin. Mid line honestly is quite susceptible. And honestly, like even the first part of the back line is quite vulnerable as well. And so whilst we're here, you can see that with her UE, she gets bumped up to an eight. And so why exactly is that? And that's because of like those really, really crazy ratios that you saw before. So again, it goes from being a small physical AOE damage up to a large physical AOE damage. And so all this is, is like a massive, massive nuke. However, before UE, again, I don't think it's anything worth writing home about. This AOE damage is really, really pitiful. And so I guess with that being said, there's not really much left to be said about Summer Mifuyu. Everyone's gonna get her. Everyone should get her to at least three stars in case we find some like really cool tech, especially because we're not gonna be getting Kana and Summer Tamaki. Yeah, you heard me right, Summer Tamaki. And so that is probably gonna be the most interesting thing about this video. What I've been alluding to this whole video is the end dates, right? So you see August 1st here for Summer Kiaru, and then you come down here and then you have a look at this and you've got the event dropping until the 7th of the 28th. What this means is that Summer Kiaru's banner is actually going to last three days longer than this event itself. And as we know, typically speaking, clan battle is actually going to start right after this. For the last couple of months, CB has started maybe like one or two days after. However, in this case, we're actually going to get the Summer Tamaki banner either like halfway through CB or at the end of CB. And so that's really interesting because what that means is that a whole bunch of these comps that we discussed in the last video, it, like it's just not going to work. You can see all of these Summer Tamaki comps over here. And honestly, that's okay because it doesn't really affect the other comps. I can still see like kind of your three attack allocations. Like you've got this one here, which is featuring your 
your Summer Cockroach and your Susana. And then you could possibly use like your Jun comp, like with the Saren, or you could be using like your T1, which is this guy over here. And so with this comp over here, or this comp up here, which is your Team 1. And then if I come down, your Team 2 would be looking something like uh, this one over here, or this one over here, or maybe like one of the ones down here. So like, I, yep, this one over here, like one of them uh, featuring Jun. Then your Team 3 would be looking like this one over here, which is like your Magical comp. And so honestly, for most people, that's all three of your attacks sorted out. Losing Summer Tamaki, in my opinion, is like, it's okay. It's okay because everybody is losing Summer Tamaki. And so all that means is that like the damage ceiling for all of the guilds is just going to be lower. That's it. It doesn't mean that like one guild is going to have an advantage over another guild. The only time where one guild may have an advantage over another guild is if they decided to release Summer Tamaki like halfway through the CB. And so the guilds with the most Summer Tamakis are going to be the ones that are actually able to pull through with these damages. So as you can see, without Summer Tamaki, we can achieve like a maximum of about 151. However, for the guilds that are able to pull them or like people who are able to luck sack the Summer Tamaki, they will be pulling upward to 120 or 131. And honestly, that difference is pretty big. If it's 130 and 115 here, it means that like every person that does not have it is going to make a difference of 150k damage. To be honest, that's quite significant. But like I would say that most guilds, especially on the global server, I'm not going to mandate like pulling for Summer Tamaki on day one, especially when it's kind of actually expected that we're actually going to be getting free pulls from it. So if I come over here, you can see that Summer Tamaki is going to be our half anniversary limited. And so here we should be technically getting our free 110 pulls. Another interesting thing to note here, I guess, is that we are going to be getting our first arena shuffle very, very soon. However, this is just your battle arena and not like your princess arena. So if you guys have not gone for that rank one reward, you guys should probably get it very, very, very soon. But yeah, that's a really, really interesting scenario to be in. So I guess Crunchyroll or Sai Games, whoever like manages like the back end of this game, they just decided to extend the Summer Kiaru banner so that we won't even get the Summer Tamaki in time for CB. Honestly, like I'm not overly fussed about it. It seems okay as long as everyone's kind of on the same playing field. But yeah, that's kind of like one interesting thing, I guess, that's going to happen for this CB. It doesn't screw everything up. It just means that you just have to use like some of the other comps that don't feature her. So yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting CB, but <laughs> let's see where this goes. Otherwise, I'm not sure there's much left to talk about. So let's start wrapping this video up. Wait, guys, I just realized Tamaki is actually a cat as well. So we're actually getting two wet cats back to back. And so I think that's actually a really, really good secret message. Two wet cats. If you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below, I would really, really appreciate it. For starters, I love my wet cats, but on top of that, it means that you've made it to the end of the video. And for watching through to the end, thank you so much. But otherwise, if you guys have found this video kind of helpful or mildly entertaining, then please consider a like, a sub, a follow, a comment, a pin, a follow. Drop by the Discord if you have some questions. And if you do want to support the channel, we have a couple of affiliate links down in the description below, as well as a membership thing, which gets you a cool badge and some emojis. But as some wise man once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.